It's the distant future, the year 5000, and turmoil is afoot. A long lost stinky sneaker has been discovered in the deepest recesses of the universe. It's the mythical shoe of Sir Willy Wonky, and legend has it that one sniff of this foul footwear makes everything you eat taste like chocolate. Lurking in the dark corners of the galaxy, two groups have emerged in the battle for the putrid penny loafer. On one side, the space ninjas. On the other side, the pirate squirrels. These two intergalactic foes must now battle head to head for the foul footwear. Who will win Sir Willy's stinky sneaker? Stay tuned to find out during another episode of Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrel. Hello everybody and welcome back to another incredible week of Space Ninjas vs. Pirate Squirrels. Once again, we're going to have the biggest, baddest, most bodacious battle the galaxy has ever known. But that's not all. Today we're also going to be asking the biggest, bestest, most bodacious question of all. What is my purpose in life? Whoa, that's kind of a mind-blowing question. It's a question that's so big, you can spend a long time thinking about it. But today's story might help us begin to answer it. So this time it's going to be a little bit different because you guys are at home and you're not here in the group with me. So I need you at home to decide if you're going to be a space ninja or a pirate squirrel. And if you want to play along, you can grab a pen and paper and you can dress up space ninjas or pirate squirrels. And I'll give you two points if you do that. And we're going to find out who wins Sir Willy Wonka's stinky shoe. We'll see you back here in two minutes. Let's see how you look and see if you got a pen and paper. See you back in two minutes. Are you ready for the big battle? Awesome. I'm going to start by giving five points to all the pirate squirrels and space ninjas who dressed up for the battle. You guys look amazing. Let's get started on our story. Don't forget to keep track of your points if you want to win the trophy. So I'll give two points to someone who can tell me who 
got thrown in the lion's den last week. That's right, it was Daniel. After God saved Daniel from the lion's den, a new king came into power. His name was King Xerxes. Say that, Xerxes. King Xerxes had just about everything. He had money, he had power, he had fame. But there was one thing he didn't have anymore, a queen. Dating is just so hard when you're a king. So King Xerxes decided to have a royal beauty pageant instead. After competing for his attention, King Xerxes would choose the most beautiful woman to be his queen. I'll give you five points if you can solve this math problem. What is 300 plus 200 minus 100? That's right, 400. King Xerxes had 400 of the most beautiful women brought before him. But one of them was by far the most beautiful of all, an Israelite woman named Esther. Not only was she beautiful, she was smart and courageous. And best of all, she loved God with her whole heart. But she didn't ta dare tell the king that she was an Israelite. The Israelites weren't very popular in that foreign land. She feared that she would never be chosen if the king found out. When King Xerxes met her, he immediately fell in love with her and declared that Esther would now be Queen Esther. Five points if you can show me what it looks like when you fall madly in love. A short time later, King Xerxes chose a man named Haman to be second in command. Haman was an evil man. Let's hear your most evil laugh. Nice work. Three points. Whenever I say the word evil, let me hear your evil laugh. So not only was Haman evil, but he hated the Israelites and he wanted to see them destroyed. So evil Haman came up with an evil plan. He lied to the king. He said that the people from Israel refused to obey his laws and he recommended that the king give an order to destroy them. Unfortunately, it worked. King Xerxes believed Haman's lie and he gave the order that all the Israelites be found and killed. One of those Israelites was a man named Mordecai. And Mordecai was Queen Esther's cousin. And when he found out about the order, he sent a message to the queen telling her to beg the king for mercy. Mordecai told Esther, maybe this is why you were made queen, so that you could save your people. There was only one problem. There was a rule that no one, including Queen Esther, could approach the king without being invited. If you broke the king's rule, he could forgive you by raising his scepter. But if he didn't raise his scepter, the penalty was death. Queen Esther knew she could be killed. But if she didn't do something, her people would be killed instead. So four points if you have a bathrobe and you can put on a bathrobe. So she put on her robes and filled with every bit of courage. She approached King Xerxes. For a tense moment, Esther didn't know if she was going to live or die. But to her relief, the king raised his royal scepter. He forgave her and asked, what is it, my queen? What do you want? I'll give you anything. She replied, if it pleases you, my king, come to my feast today and bring Haman with you. At the end of the feast, King Xerxes knew that Queen Esther must want something more. So he asked her again, what do you want, my queen? Ask for anything and I'll give it to you. 
Let's see what Queen Esther said to the king. I'll give 10 points if you can find your Bible, open your Bible and find Esther chapter seven, verse three first. Whoever can find it first. Then Queen Esther answered in Esther 7, 3, Your Majesty, I hope you will be pleased to let me live. That's what I want. Please spare my people. That's my appeal to you. The king couldn't believe that someone would threaten his queen and her people, so he asked her, Who is this man who would dare do such a thing? Queen Esther pointed a finger at Haman and said, That man. I am an Israelite, and Haman is our enemy. He is trying to wipe us out. The king was furious at Haman and ordered his men to put him to death. And even though King Xerxes couldn't change his law, he gave the people of Israel weapons so they could defend themselves. Mordecai was right. It wasn't just by luck that Esther had been made queen. God put her there so that she could help protect his people. Now that you've heard the story, I think it's time to see how well you were listening. Are you all ready for the big review battle? Here's how the battle works. I'm going to ask you all a series of multiple choice questions, and for every question you get right, give yourself one point. King Xerxes chose Esther to be his queen. How many women did King Xerxes have to choose from? Did he choose from A, 300, B, 400, C, 500, or D, 600? If you said B, 400, you are correct. Give yourself a point. The next question, who was the evil man who hated the people of Israel and wanted to destroy them? Was it A, Daniel, B, Xerxes, C, Mordecai, or D, Haman? If you said D, Haman, you're right, give yourself a point. When Mordecai heard about Haman's evil plan, he told Queen Esther. How did Mordecai know Esther? A, they were cousins. B, they were brother and sister, C, they were friends, or D, they were neighbors. Answered A, cousins, you are correct. Give yourself a point. Here's the next question. Queen Esther wasn't supposed to approach the king without an invitation. What did the king raise to show he forgave her? A, his hand, B, his royal scepter, C, his royal banner, or D, his royal broomstick? If you answered B, his royal scepter, give yourself a point, you're correct. Here's the next question. At the end of the feast, what did Esther request from King Xerxes? Was it A, to have Haman arrested? B, to have Haman killed? C, to have Haman's people killed? or D, to spare her people. If you answer D, you are correct. Give yourself a point. So how did you do? I'll give you a few minutes to add up your points, and I will meet you right back here, and let's see who won Sir Willy Wonka's stinky <coughs> shoe.
that was lucky, or was it? Wow, it was a good thing that Esther was the queen. If she hadn't been there to stop Haman, all of the Israelites could have been wiped out. Do you think it was just luck that Esther was queen at exactly the right time? Mordecai didn't seem to think it was luck. Do you remember what he said to Esther? Maybe this is why you were made queen. In other words, maybe God made you queen so he could save his people. It might have looked like luck that Esther became queen, but it wasn't. God chose her and put her in that place so that she could help save his people. He had a purpose for her, a reason for putting her there. And guess what? It's the same for us. Sometimes we might think that it's just by luck or by chance that we live where we do or go to school where we do or live by the people we do, but it's not. God placed us there for a purpose. He wants us to do something good through us, just like he did through Esther. That's what our Bible verse for today says. Let's take a look at it. Find your Bibles and open them to Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. Philippians 2.13 says, God is working in you. He wants your plans and your acts to fulfill his good purpose. You are no accident. There's a reason why God made you and put you where you are. He has a good purpose for your life. Maybe his good purpose is for you to encourage or help someone or be someone's friend. Or maybe, just like Queen Esther, God's good purpose for you is to help save his people, not from being killed, but from sin. Sometimes God places us around people who don't know about Jesus so that we can tell them. And when they hear about Jesus, they too can follow and be saved from their sins. Figuring out God's purpose for your life can be tough, but that's okay. Queen Esther didn't figure out until she was much older. Just know that God put you here for a reason and he wants to do something good through you. All right, let's see who won Sir Willy Wonky's stinky shoe. How many points did you get? Shut them out. Wow, you guys did a great job. So I'm so proud I'm gonna give you guys all the trophy. Lord God, thank you that you made us on purpose and for a purpose, that we are your workmanship, and we've been made to do the things that you want us to do, to bring you glory. Father, help us to stand for you, help us to reach out to others for you, and glorify you with our actions and our attitudes, whether it's encouraging someone or telling someone about Jesus so they can follow you. Bless all of us, bless all the kids, in Jesus' name.